let's cover a couple of real quick shortcuts and hints about factoring trinomials. So one of the hardest things to do is identify whether or not your factors are positive or negative. That is, when you decide to factor and you find your a, b, and c, and you build your x with a times c on the top and b on the bottom, deciding what your unknown factors are, whether they're positive or negative, often takes the longest amount of time. So here's a quick shortcut. If you're looking at your factors of b and c and trying to find the values of your factors, you can look at their symbols to determine what your factors should be. For example, if b and c are both positive, then both of your factors will be positive. If b and c are negative and positive, that is you have a negative B value but a positive C value, then both of your factors are negative. If you have a positive B with a negative C, you have a positive and a negative factor. And if you have negative B with negative C, you have a positive and a negative factor. This will hopefully help you decide what your factors are as you build the problem. So let's do a few quick examples. So, x squared plus 4x minus 32. If we fill this in, we get 1, positive 4, negative 32, which means we get negative 32 on top and positive 4 on the bottom. We have a negative C value and a positive B value, which according to our rule says that we should have one positive and one negative value. If we look at our factors of 32, we need two things that will multiply to negative 32 and add to 4. So, negative 32, we break that down. And we should be able to see pretty quickly that it breaks into 8 and 4. And to give us a positive 4, we should have a positive 8 and a negative 4. So, positive 8, negative 4. So, that worked. Our second example, 3x cubed minus 3x minus 90, we see right off the bat that it has a GCF. So let's pull that GCF out first. We get 3 times x squared minus x minus 30. And we'll factor it real quick. We have an a of 1, a b of negative 1, and a c of negative 30, which means we have negative 30 on top and negative 1 on the bottom. According to our rule, we have two negatives, so we should have one of each factor, one positive, one negative. When you break down 30, you can look for several values, and you should see pretty quickly that 6 and 5 will be the values that multiply to negative 30 and add to negative 1. In this case, negative 6, positive 5. So once again, that's a quick shortcut on deciding whether you have positives, negatives, or one of each when we're talking about factors. Last two examples really quick. 6x squared minus 11x plus 4. We have an a of 6, a b of negative 11, and a c of positive 4, which means that on top we have 24, on the bottom we have negative 11. If we look at this problem, since we have a negative b and a positive c, then both of our values should be negative, and we're looking for things that will multiply to make 24, but add to make negative 11. In this case, 24 can be broken down into negative 8 times negative 3. Negative 8, negative 3, and those will add up to be negative 11. So, final example... 24x squared y, 34xy, and 12y. Right off the bat, you can see that there is a common factor, so we'll pull out a y as well as the number 2, which breaks this down into 12x squared plus 17x plus 6. So our new a is 12. Our B is 17, and our C is 6, which means that on top, we have 72, 
and on the bottom we have 17. As we start looking at our factors of 72, our shortcut, since we have both B and C being positive, says that both of our factors should be positive. And when we factor out 72, we find that, that it can be factored into 9 and 8. So we get positive 9, positive 8, and those will add up to 17 and multiply to 72. So once again, these are just shortcuts in order to figuring out what kind of factors you have when factoring a trinomial.